Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office for your Tuesday, February the 20th, 2024. In today's detailed weather forecast, we are going to be talking briefly about the West because there is going to still be some moderate to heavy rainfall throughout the day tomorrow, well, ending tomorrow afternoon, but you get the idea. More mountain snowfall still to come with more rainfall eventually for the Pacific Northwest, while the Midwest is going to actually see a big, massive warm-up to begin March. So to start off things, here's a look at the latest European model. This just got done rendering, folks, about an hour ago. So this is fresh off the press when it comes to weather data. So looking at California right now, we're looking at lots of rainfall. If you look at the bottom side of the screen, we actually have some intense thunderstorms approaching the coast. So that's what this is pretty much modeling at this point. So pretty accurate, right? We got the surface slow there off the Oregon, um, California border, and that's helping to usher in the moisture while the Midwest is seeing some quiet weather and that's how it's gonna stay probably for a while. So going forward in time here, we can see that the pattern does change with a surface low that does develop over the upper Midwest and portions of the Southeast. This is actually gonna bring the threat for severe weather, only a marginal risk for some large hail, and that's really about it with this system. This is not a big severe weather producer system, thank goodness, right? Because we're not quite there yet for severe weather season. That really doesn't get going until at least March 1st, and that goes until at least June. In my books, because I have certain seasons where I cover content on this channel, and severe weather season is one of them, which in my books begins on March 1st and goes through June 1st, with hurricane season following behind that for June 1st through October the 1st. All right, so going forward, that system moves into the northeast, into the eastern seaboard. Not going to be a big snow producer, and that's also a good thing with this limited snowfall, mainly for the higher elevations, so not much colder air wrapping in on the back side of this, which is good news for a lot of you that don't like the snow. You're going to see a little bit of though if you're in the higher elevations, and then after that goes on by, we're back to the quiet weather, and that's why this video is going to end up being very short, because there's really not a whole lot to talk about. All right, by the time we go into the weekend, though, next weekend, that is the last weekend of February, that's when things could get much more active, potentially for California, for the Pacific Northwest, yet again, just been active where it snows, where it pours, right? And that's where it's been active for a while, for much of March, or for much of February, I should say. While the Midwest is just not seen much, just not going to see much at all, at least through the end of the month. And eventually, maybe the second to last day of February, we could squeeze out some showers and some thunderstorms, perhaps. But that's far out. That's This is like eight to nine days out. With more intense rainfall potentially for Oregon, we'll see if that actually happens. And then beyond that, there's a lot of uncertainty in the global computer models because this upcoming pattern, this is a drastic change that is expected to happen. And so when you see sudden changes like this, models have a hard time figuring out if it is going to even happen at all and when and where is it going to happen, right? But all you need to know is quiet weather will persist for the majority of the United States, other than just a few areas there for the Midwest through at least the end of the month. Looking at total rainfall accumulations here, this is the ensemble. Actually, why am I looking at the 360 hour out period? We're going to look at the first 10 days and we can see here over Indiana. This is where most of the ensembles do indicate that you're going to get some more decent rainfall, some relief in the drought aspects there, anywhere between about an inch to maybe an inch and a half. A lot more needed rain is on the way for the Pacific Northwest, and I mean a lot more is coming because when we forward this out, you can see some of the higher elevations, some of the valleys here could end up getting anywhere between 8 to 12 inches of uh, QPF or quantitative precipitation amounts in those areas in the form of snow if that's cold enough and um, lower elevation rainfall. So good news there for Oregon and even California will get some more precipitation, but I don't think it's going to be as significant as what we're dealing with 
the last couple of days, which is good news because Santa Barbara Airport did close down due to some flooding on its runway, which you don't see normally. So looking at the uh, amount of rainfall anomalies or precipitation anomalies, I should say here, is it going to be above average? Is it going to be below average? Or are you going to see normal amounts, right? So areas in the brown here, and I'm just going to go through through the next couple of weeks on this one, okay? Because this kind of gives us a long story idea of what might happen. So for the deep south here, you're in the brown, and that means anywhere between about a quarter of an inch to maybe as much as an inch and a half below average. So you're really not gonna see a whole lot of moisture, unfortunately. For these areas, this has been a big struggle thus far. We're not getting a whole lot of moisture down here. Uh, at least enough early on in the period, which you ha were able to get some drought relief, but now it's drying out again. And then, of course, up here in Indiana, where it should not be wet for an El Nino, you're looking at above average precipitation anomalies, perhaps an inch above normal per two weeks. So that is good news there for Indiana, for the Ohio Valley, as well as Pennsylvania. This could come in the form of severe weather events as well. So, Ethan... Keep an eye on that. And then, of course, uh, across the Pacific Northwest, wow, getting a huge deluge of well above average. I mean, some of these numbers here are three to even four and a half inches above normal. That is pretty extreme for Oregon and for Washington standards. And then even for California, we're looking at near average precipitation at least through the next two weeks. Not above average, not below average, but not also as active as what we've been dealing with. So now looking at the temperature anomalies here, uh, red shadings, um, orange shadings denote above average temperature anomalies. Blue and green colors and purple colors indicate temperatures below average, all right? So these are departures from normal, and this is the ensemble mean. This is the European and uh, the super, well, not the super blend, but you get the idea. 51 ensemble members put into a model to make an average, and this is what you end up with. So this is remarkable. Most of the members do indicate at least over the next two to three days that temperatures will be above average for the midwest it's gonna be a warm one maybe some relief in sight temporarily some of the ensembles or most of the ensembles do indicate that the northeast and the even far eastern u.s including for indiana ohio will have below average temperatures not significantly below average but at least to take the weight off of say seeing temperatures in the 60s maybe close to 70 you'll see temperatures in the upper 40s to lower 50s instead Right, but that's going to be short-lived because that ridge of high pressure is going to build on in. And this is pretty extraordinary from the ensemble perspective here, from the European. 51 ensemble members uh, making a netted weighted average are really pointing towards well above average temperatures. Possibly some record high temperatures expected throughout the Midwest. Even for portions of the, uh, the Ozarks as well as the Ohio Valley could have well above average temperatures, possibly even some uh, near monthly records could be um, broken up here in Minnesota as well as Iowa uh, to end out February. So a very warm end there and beginning probably March on a very warm note. Uh, look at this for Indiana, very warm to end out February. Record high temperatures do continue and look at this, this will continue into early March. So very warm spring-like temperatures coming about for the Midwest and the Great Lakes region, while the West here will have below average temperatures continuing throughout the entire forecast period. I don't see anywhere in here where temperatures will be above average at all for California, except in the short term, probably the next four days, you have those above average temperature anomalies, and then it just turns cooler as we get more descending float node uh, over this area. So what happens is we actually get so when you think about of a trough like this, the, the trough axis overall is going to be draped over here in the long run after we get through the through next weekend. And when you get descending flow here, you actually get colder air advection from higher latitudes. And then when you get up slow or up ascending flow here on the left or on the 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 eastern side of the trough, you actually get more warm air advection that takes place, and that's why. Much of the Midwest for uh, 
through the entire period here overall we'll have well above average temperatures and i mean possibly record or monthly records could be challenged as well as certainly daily record highs will be broken with this uh pattern that is shaping up so yeah, you don't need the coats for very much longer. In fact, you could take those off right now if I were you because it is going to definitely be warm for a while. The reason why is when we look at our geopotential heights, so this is looking at a topographical map of the atmosphere, higher heights usually mean warmer temperatures. That's where you have your subtropical air mass, subtropical barotropic ridging that happens. The blue colors indicate troughing where we get cooler air aloft that mixes down to the surface you don't allow for strong daytime heating. So going forward, we can see where that ridge does break down. We get that trough in the northeast. That is why we do see cooler than average temperatures shaping up. But it's not going to last long, folks, because guess what? The ridge is going to move eastward. It's going to be draped across the Midwest, the eastern U.S., and again, that, uh, that ascending flow. We're seeing this flow shaping up. So what that does is you're going to evacuate warmer air from, uh, from tropical regions northward. And that's going to allow some warmer temperatures. Whereas you get descending flow here, despite near or above average height anomalies, you're actually going to get cooler air advection still in place over the west. Before, again, the pattern really amplifies. This could be something to watch closely because if we get any perturbations into the Midwest here, we have some severe weather events taking place, especially over the Ozarks and the Ohio Valley, including for Indiana, something that uh, we'll have to monitor in days to come. Alrighty, now before I do end this video, don't click away from the video, folks, or else you are you don't care about with what I'm going to say here. This is pretty important that I want to address with you all in my announcements, all right? So as you all know, that my 2024 Atlantic hurricane season um, seasonal forecast is expected to be released on April the 15th okay April the 15th that is nearly two months from today actually to be specific it's less than two months away but you get the idea April the 15th I will be releasing my seasonal Atlantic hurricane forecast and a lot of you are probably like oh I cannot wait I cannot wait I'm excited because this Atlantic hurricane season will be very different from what we had last year, okay? We're talking not only more named storms, potentially, but a very busy season, and potentially many more landfalls could be possible because of that La Nina that is expected to develop. So on the 15th of April, we'll be breaking down why I think this Atlantic season, hurricane season, will be very busy, perhaps even hyperactive. That is a potential on the docket. Uh, for this season. Secondly, I have a Discord server, Weather Force. I encourage you all to join by clicking the link in the description below this video where you can interact with not only me, but Butterdog, Diana, Drift Racer is in there, Trey, as well as um, Alpha Nut, and then you got other people in there. You got Caleb, um, you got Chase McLean, you got uh, just a lot of people that love to interact with me and everything like that. So if you all want to participate in the Discord server, you can post images, videos, and pictures. You don't want to miss it. Link is in the description below this video to join today. It is 100% free. Well, anyways, thank you all for watching today's detailed weather forecast outlook and discussion for February the 20th, 2024 on this fantastic Tuesday. As always, have a great rest of your day. I'll be back in the home weather office tomorrow with another detailed weather forecast because, yep, we're looking far into the future for a big weather pattern change that you all need to be aware of. Share, like, and subscribe.